What's up guys, Jimmo here with RefinishNetwork.com. Today we've got a 68 Camaro that's going to be painted the new Synergy Green off of the new Camaro. And this is part of a major restoration job we've been doing over the last six to nine months, I'd uh, guess at. So these are just some pictures to give you an idea of what we've done up to this point. We've had to replace um, quite a bit of metal on it. We've replaced the doors, the fenders, the hood, the deck lid, and we had to weld in new rockers on it. So we've painted the insides of the parts, the uh, door jam areas, and fitted everything. Got the bodywork all done and prep, so I'm at the point where I'm going to be spraying. Now I don't have any video of what went into this car to get it to this point, but I can tell you it was a lot of work, a lot of man hours went into it already. The painting is probably going to be the least time consuming part of this whole job. So here's a look at the car right before I put my first coat of paint on. Here's a look at the parts, they're in the other booth at my shop. I'll be going back and forth painting these while I do the car. So here we go with the first coat. Now this is a three-stage candy paint. So what happens with this is it gets a metallic color laid first. So initially we will paint the car uh, the silver. It takes about three coats for it to cover, but we need to get full coverage with this color before moving on to the green. So I'm going to spray like any other car I've done. Um, I'm using my Iwata LPH 400 with the LVX orange tip on it. I'm going to try to maintain about a third to 50% overlap this whole time. Now I'd have been happy using the 3M AccuSpray to paint this car. It's actually one of my favorite base guns, but we did not have any of the disposable tips left for painting it. But that is a great gun, especially if you don't have a lot of money to spend on a gun. For the price, it can do pretty well any job you need. Compared to the Iwata or the Sata that I'll be pulling out uh, pretty soon, you know, those guns, they carry a price tag of anywhere from about four to 900 bucks where the AccuSpray is usually between one to two hundred. And you'll also notice that all my guns use the 3M PPS paint system, which is that plastic cup on the top that holds the paint. It's a lid and liner system. So here's a look at our car after the first coat. It's still kind of patchy looking. You can see the sand scratches somewhat still. Um, that'll go away after the next coat. We are going to put on three coats in total. So you can assume about 10 minutes in between each coat. There'll be three coats all together. And they're applied fairly wet. So this is the second coat going on. I'm sure you get the idea by now, so I'm going to go ahead in a minute and speed up the footage and get us up to the next point. Yeah, this is how we do it in the flat rate shop.
So here we are after we've applied three coats of the silver. Now you can see it has a nice even matte look to it. Uh, the paint's also flashed off. It's been sitting probably about 15 minutes at this point. I'll probably give it about 30 before I put on the green. Here I am just running the tack rag over the car. I'll do that every probably second coat and I'll do it before I put on the, the green and make sure I put do it before I clear the car. Now here's a look at the parts in the other booth after applying the silver. Now I'm ready to start applying the green. You'll notice I've switched to the SATA RP as my paint gun. I just think it'll be a little bit easier on this job to keep a nice, even, uh, consistent spray going. Kind of puts out a little bit more material at once, which uh, I think is going to help me here. Now you can probably go ahead and point out the obvious that I could have used the SATA RP for the first color as well. Now I certainly could have. It was kind of a last minute decision. I, nor I normally only use this gun for clear. So now the reason I was saying that it's more imperative to have the green go on evenly because this is a candy. So the way the candy works is you have the silver underneath and you have a transparent color on top of it, in this case the green. And the sun will reflect the metallics underneath and you'll get a really high sparkle look to it. So with every coat that we put on, it's going to get a bit darker and darker. So if you have too much paint in one spot and not enough in the other, it can look blotchy, um, darker in, in areas. And uh, so the more even you can get the color to go on in with each coat, the uh, better the color is going to look when it's done. Now this color is pretty cool. It also has some pearl in the green, so it's going to reflect some different colors in the light and uh, give it a, a bit more pop. Now the roof's probably the hardest part to spray. You can probably see my guns angling slightly while I spray it. Um, that's just, I think, my vertical limit uh, taken over, but I think I've tried to compensate by by uh, turning my gun sideways a bit at, at the same time and getting as even spray in the middle area as possible. Okay, so here we are after our first coat of the candy green. Now, uh, you'll notice it looks like it's got a pretty consistent look to it, so I think I did all right um, with my first coat here. So if you mess up your spray at this point, there's really 
very little that you can do to correct it without respraying probably the entire car. So if you're spraying a candy job, make sure you're doing it in a clean environment somewhere where nothing's going to fly into your paint and wreck your job because when I say start over, you got to start over at that silver again and it would suck. So here we are putting on our second coat. So I'm going to speed up these next two coats, 80s montage style, and I'll get us up to the next point. So here we are after applying the green. Um, you can see it still has a nice consistent even look to it. It's gotten a bit darker since the uh, first coat, but it's still transparent enough to reflect the metallics underneath and give it that cool high sparkle effect. Now if you're wondering what those little guns on the stand were, they are air blowers. They just move the air around to help the paint dry. Okay, so after about 30 minutes of letting that paint dry, I'm ready to apply the clear coat. Now that's going to provide the shine and also provide protection for the finish. So when you're spraying clear, you only have a certain amount of time based on your hardener, reducer and temperatures to uh, apply it. And it uh, starts to dry pretty quick. And when you're spraying it, the best analogy I can give is it's like spraying hot wax and you cannot spray the hot wax over any part that's already hardened. Now if you do so, it will result in some dry spray. It'll be kind of a gritty look and it will, uh, it will polish out in the end. So it's not a huge deal, but you kind of want to get it as, um, as good as you can. So you kind of want to pick the smallest part of the car to uh, start and end. So I've started at the left rear quarter and uh, I'm going to try and spray half the hood, half the uh, roof, and then move on to the other side and uh, hopefully the wet edge hasn't dried by the time I move over there. I guess I haven't mentioned the products that I'm using here yet. Uh, they are all from BASF, all the paint products, uh, the primers right up to the clear. The, um, the base coat, it's a waterborne base coat from the RM line called Onyx. The clear coat that I'm spraying is from Glazerit. It is 923-200, it's a low VOC clear.
So this is the second coat going on. Now how I spray it here is how it's going to look when it dries. So if there is any uh, problems with the first coat, the second coat can sort of compensate for it. But uh, you should try and get them both to go down as nice as you can. And I'm going to spray it the same way. So what I've also gone ahead and done is sprayed all of the offsets first. Um, by offsets I mean the insides of the wheel wells, any edges that aren't uh, kind of parallel to the rest of the surface. Okay, so here's the end result of our Camaro. It looks pretty good. Um, there is one little flaw in it. I tried to go body surfing on the door. It didn't work out so well. I'll show you that in a second. It's just a mark in the clear uh, from when I was trying to spray the hood. I guess my paint suit rubbed up against the door slightly. Um, so it's marked the clear. It will sand out of the clear and I can just apply another coat of clear over that door. And uh, we should be good to go. And there it is right there. So that's it. I guess there's not too much else to say. So uh, Chip Foose, eat your heart out, brother. Okay, so the most common question I seem to get is a list of materials that I've used. So what I've done is I put a link right under the video. So you can click on that and it'll give you a list of all the materials and some links to where you can get them. Okay, so don't forget to rate the video, leave me a comment, and pass this link along to somebody that you think might want it. I do get all the comments. Uh, they go right to my Blackberry. I don't usually have time to respond to all of them. Uh, there seems to be more and more these days, which is awesome. But um, yeah, like I said, I do read them all, so keep them coming. Even if you just want to call me a jackass and, uh, and tell me how terrible my video is, that is great with me too. Um, I get a pretty good laugh when I see uh, how upset people get watching these videos sometimes. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the website. That is www.refinishnetwork.com. Always lots happening there, so uh, register for free and uh, get on with the discussion with the other painters and techs around the world. And hang tight for my next one, because I got some good ones coming, so subscribe.